Hello, welcome to this presentation on how to determine sound power using the sound intensity method with the new Brulinkia 2270 sound intensity meter. First I'll give you a brief introduction to the concept of sound power, how it's measured and what it's used for. Then we will look at the unique capability of sound intensity measurements to reject background noise which would otherwise interfere with your measurements. Finally, we'll perform a demonstration measurement. First let's look at sound power. What is it and what is it used for? Sound power is the total acoustic energy radiating away from a source. In this picture you will see a red dot at the center. Sound power is the total energy of that red dot. Sound power is the sum of energy over all directions and therefore has no distance or direction of its own. It's a property of the source. What is sound power used for? Well, sound power can be used to predict future sound pressure levels at any distance. It's an essential part of CE product labeling and is outlined in European directives such as the Machine Directive and the Outdoor Directive. And when your products are correctly labeled, ultimately this will give you access to European markets. The image on the right shows you a typical product label showing the amount of sound power. Now for a long time sound power has been determined using sound pressure measurements. What that means is you place your source on a horizontal surface and place microphones on a hemisphere at a large number of points. Measurements of this type are clearly explained in classic ISO standards in the range 3740 to 3747. The picture shows an example from the standard ISO 3744. Determining sound power using the sound pressure method has a number of disadvantages. The room that you choose to perform the measurements in must be strictly controlled. The acoustic properties of the room and the background noise will influence the accuracy of your measurements. Because sound pressure is a scalar quantity, sound pressure levels always tend to add up. So any background noise will add to your measurements and cause an overestimation of the sound power that you have determined. Let's look at a classic problem in acoustics. Here we have a combination of a motor which is driving a pump. If you wanted to know the sound power of the pump by itself, this measurement becomes very difficult to perform because of the noise of the motor. If you want to know the sound power of the pump, the noise of the motor will interfere. So you'd have to shut it off, but of course then the pump won't run. So this is a classic problem in acoustics. How can it be solved? Well, this can be solved using the sound intensity method. The sound intensity method directly measures the current of acoustic energy through the medium and there is a simple mathematical relationship between the sound intensity and the sound power that we needed. Sound intensity, if you look at this picture here, is really the strength of the blue arrows. What are the advantages of the sound intensity method? Well, the sound intensity method will help you to reject the influence of background noise and enable you to determine sound power of a source in situ at its actual location. If your product is one of the machines on this installation and there is a noise complaint, it would be unfair if the measurement was influenced by background noise of other units. And so the sound intensity method will help you to reduce the influence of background noise of other sources. So let's move on and see how background noise rejection works. We'll start with this picture, a side view. In this picture the green box is the source that you're trying to measure. For example this could be a pump and the red box represents an unwanted external noise source. 
This could be the motor, or in fact, somebody else's product. So the idea here is that we would like to have the sound power of the green box. If we draw a measurement surface around the green box, and that's the blue hemisphere, then all sound waves radiating away from the green box will all pass through the blue measurement surface in the same direction. Let's give an arbitrary designation to this direction and call it plus or positive. If we measure the sound intensity over the blue surface, then all the pluses will add up, giving us the total intensity of sound radiating away from the green box. Next, we'll have a look at the external noise source. Here the external noise source is radiating sound waves of its own. Those are the red arrows. They will pass into the blue measurement surface with different signs depending on which side. As the sound waves enter the blue hemisphere, they have a minus sign. And as they leave, they have a plus sign. So integrating over the blue surface, the minuses and the pluses will cancel out and the influence of the external noise source is cancelled. When determining the sound power of the green box, the blue measurement surface may be of any shape that's convenient. For practical measurements, it's often best to have the blue box as close to the green source as possible. This will enhance the ratio of the sound you're measuring to the background noise still further and keep your measurements clean. Here is what it would look like in practice. The machine to be measured is enclosed by a measurement box consisting of five sides. And on the right, on the sound level meter screen, you will see this five-sided box flattened out into five surfaces, enabling the measurement to be done. Let's have a look at the equipment required for the classic sound pressure method. In the past, you would need the equipment shown here. However, with the introduction of the Brulencare 2270 sound intensity meter, this is all you need to provide accurate determination of sound power. The equipment is very light. It's portable. It's easy to use. The instrument has powerful computational features. The user interface is intuitive. The measurements can be performed in a very short time. And of course, everything conforms to the sound intensity instrumentation standard, IEC 61043. The sound level meter is part of a complete system, including all accessories you need in the field to perform sound power determination. And for users of the previous 2260 platform, there is good news. The accessories you have may be connected directly to the 2270 sound intensity meter. There is more good news. Calibration of the instrument in the field has become much easier with this new sound intensity calibrator. It's no longer necessary to dismantle the probe for calibration, and so therefore it's safer. In order for background noise rejection to work, a number of practical concerns should be explained at this point. All the measurement surfaces must be measured. The geometry has to be complete. The device under test and the external noise source should be steady state. In other words, no changes over time. And within the measurement surface, there should be no absorption. If you make sure all these concerns are met, then you will be able to eliminate the influence of background noise. Even when the background noise is higher than the device you are testing. This is acoustic magic. If you are required to perform sound power determination according to the international standard ISO 9614, then you will need to adapt your measurement strategy in order to reduce the measurement uncertainty. 
The 2270 sound intensity meter will enable you to conform to all these standards. We will now move on to a practical demonstration of the measurement. We will determine the sound power of a simple kitchen mixer. This is done by placing the kitchen mixer into a cubic box of 50 centimeters on each side. The kitchen mixer is put in its maximum speed setting and we will use what is known as the scanning method for speed and simplicity of the measurement. Here is the measurement box used for this demonstration. It's 50 centimeters on each side, but in the real world, any shaped measurement box will do as long as all the surfaces are measured. Here we see the device under test in the correct place. At the start of the measurement, this is where the probe is held. The probe is then moved over the surface in zigzag rows, backwards and forwards, until the far corner is reached. During that time, the surface average is determined by the intensity meter. Scanning the surface is easy to learn. It's very much like evenly painting a surface using a spray can. This allows for a very short measurement time and accurate results. An alternative is measurements at discrete points, which will be explained elsewhere. Here we see the probe at the end point of the surface scan. Here you see the screen of the sound level meter, ready to measure the sound intensity over five surfaces. Previously, I've constructed a matrix of three rows and three columns and deactivated the corner squares. The five squares remaining are the five surfaces of the box around the mixer. To perform the measurement, I place the probe at the starting position, press the start button on the meter, scan the surface, and when I've reached the opposite corner, press the stop button on the meter. I will then save the measurement on the respective square and move on to the next square until all five surfaces are done. So first I'll switch on the kitchen mixer and allow it to reach its maximum speed and then start to perform the measurements. I'm now starting measurement number one. The measurement on surface number one is now completed and I will store it in memory using the store button on the meter. The meter then automatically moves to the next square to be measured. I'm storing measurement number two. I'm now ready to measure the top surface of the cube. Here we go. Store it in memory and go to the far side. Only one surface left to go, last one, measurement stored, that completes all five measurements. I now press the result icon and on this screen 
you can see that the total A-weighted sound power of this kitchen mixer is 78.8 decibels. That concludes this part of the demonstration. So during this brief lecture and demonstration, you have seen that the measurement of sound intensity is a powerful, many-faceted tool with the capability of solving near-impossible acoustic riddles, like ignoring the effect of background noise. Nevertheless, thanks to the Brulink here 2270's intuitive user interface, it's very, very easy to perform these measurements. Thank you very much for being a part of this demonstration. On the final sheet, you will see a list of some related literature.